You might be wondering, how can I make blank interesting? I had a client the other day who had to attend an all day training on a new database system. <sighs> right? How do you make that interesting? How do you make really boring or maybe not boring, they're just really dense or technical topics. How do you make them interesting? <laughs> By the end of this video, you will be able to turn the mundane into the memorable. I'm gonna walk you through and actually show you six really easy to remember, immediately applicable characteristics of what makes something really memorable that come from one of my absolute all-time favorite books, Made to Stick by Chip and Dan Heath. I'm also gonna add one to the list that I think you'll really love. The first one is simple. Find the core of an idea and make it quick. The second one is unexpected. Literally just doing something that people aren't expecting will wake them up and make them remember. Third one, concrete. Make sure your idea is graspable, touchable, tangible. It's the reason that I use props because your brain is actually more likely to find this five seconds of a video more interesting because I'm holding a brick as opposed to if I was just talking about the importance of making an idea concrete. The fourth one of course is credibility. As long as you talk in an accent and put on a pair of glasses, it's bound to be believable, more interesting. I will say this is a really dangerous one um, because you want the information you're presenting, you don't wanna make it more interesting by feigning credibility, right? That's how we get fake news circulating around. You wanna actually be really deliberate about how you're sourcing information, where you're getting it, and make sure if you're gonna disseminate it that it's rooted in pretty darn solid ground. And the idea behind Chip and Dan Heath's perspective of giving an idea credibility is that it's much more likely to be remembered if you know the source is real, right? So if I say psychological safety is really important, okay. But if I say uh, Google and Harvard collaborated to do this massive study internally at Google and they found that the number one characteristic of high performing teams is the degree of psychological safety in that group, right? One, likely to be forgotten. The other one, more likely to be remembered because you heard Harvard and Google and your brain turned on and said this must be something, right? That study was actually done. You can read about it in the New York Times or uh, on Google's rework website. Oh. The next one is emotional. Right? We're emotional beings. Even if you've got the credibility and the research and the logic, we make emotional decisions. Um, I was reading a book to my two-year-old son, Otto, yesterday called Love You Forever. If you have not read this book, I think it's like a fairly classic book. If you have not read this book, I was literally sitting in my lap, tears dropping onto his shirt as I'm reading this book. This is like the eighth time I've read this book. I knew it was coming. I knew the page that I was gonna cry on and I still cried, right? Emotion is so powerful. Like I will not forget that moment with Otto, but there are plenty of other terrible books that I will forget that were not emotion invoking. The sixth one I just demonstrated a bit is stories, right? Instead of just saying, use emotion, I told you a story about Otto sitting in my lap and a tear dripping down on his shirt, right? Stories are really, really memorable. Now in the book, Made to Stick, they spell these all out into an acronym, success, with one S. So I just shared the six characteristics that are in the book. I wanna add a seventh, which is specificity. Now success can be spelled correctly. And I do believe one of my favorite John Hodgman quotes is specificity is the soul of narrative. Can you imagine if I said one time I was reading a book to my kid and it was sad? So different than saying one time my two-year-old sat in my lap with this cute little yellow shirt and I read him this book for the eighth time and it still made me cry. Even though that's more information and more data, you're actually still more likely to remember it. Now going back to the boring topic elements, now that you have those laid out, even if I was talking about something really boring, so let's actually take a commercial for example, because the entire premise of Made to Stick is, why do you remember a Super Bowl commercial from eight years ago, but not the one that happened right after it? Same context, same timing, same state of mind, but there was something about the content that was really memorable. And I was talking to my brother who owns a Kia Soul, and he hates the Kia, the old Kia Soul commercials that I guess had hamsters in that, just absolutely hated them. But he remembered them because it was so specific and weird and strange that it was actually memorable. It's probably the reason that the Geico lizard gecko, 
Oh, he's not a lizard, he's a gecko, a geico, I got it now. It's oddly specific, it's oddly visual, it's memorable, he kind of plays out a story in the commercial. There's often some level of emotion or a complete intentional lack of emotion. And all of that kind of checks off the boxes of these criteria. So if you scan back through this video and write down yourself a checklist of seven items and when you go to share a boring topic or any topic for that matter, just go through this checklist. Right? Is it simple? Is it unexpected? Is it concrete? Do you have credibility built in? Is there emotion involved? Do you tell a story and is it specific enough? If you like this, you will love my video titled How to Be Interesting because it's a, essentially a mini masterclass in how to put these seven items to work in your own storytelling. I'm Chad Littlefield, have an awesome day.